New rules for equine movement are coming. Hello, Simon. Um, this is Tara Glenn from To The Bar, and I know we've chatted a few times, but it's the first time we've done it on video like this, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of what now is a very busy week for you and your colleagues um, to get the rest of us in shape for the post at the end of the year when the transition period has finished with leaving the EU and when we're traveling our horses we will have a few new regulations that we need to comply with and we're delighted to be here to ask you a couple of the questions that our followers have been asking us that they would like us to put to you so thank you Simon. Thank you, Tara, and nice to see you again. And it's a pleasure. So please, please crash on with your questions. Right. Well, the first question came in. I'm planning on traveling my horses to an Irish event next summer. What will I have to do? OK, so here are the edited highlights. Um, firstly, you'll need to make sure they meet all the new EU pre-export requirements in relation to blood testing, residency and isolation, or they will not be allowed to travel. And these apply to both temporary and permanent moves, although the precise details vary somewhat and also depend on whether the horses are registered, that's stud book approved by the EU, or unregistered. But for the precise detail, you should consult the relevant gov.uk page for more information. Moving on, you'll need to book an appointment with your vet to obtain the necessary blood samples for testing and they are likely to charge for this service. You'll then need an export health certificate for each of your horses. You'll be able to apply for these online using the new DEFRA EHCO EHC online portal. You'll need to get these export health certificates signed off by an official vet who will also confirm that you've met the blood testing and other pre-export requirements that I mentioned and you'll need to carry these along with the appropriate equine ID with your horses. Unregistered equines or registered equines whose stud book has not been approved by the EU will also need a supplementary travel ID. This will be provided by APHA free of charge at the same time as the export health certificate. And then finally, at the other side of the chain, you'll also need to plan to arrive at an Irish border control post that will be able to check your horses. Gov.uk provides a link to those posts that are currently confirmed, but you may wish to check with the Irish authorities for the definitive position nearer the time of the travel. OK, that's probably enough to be getting on with. Thank you, Simon. Could I just go back on um, two of those points? Firstly, the, the definition of unregistered and the recognised um, blood, blood um, stock books that are recognised by the EU. At the moment, it's my understanding that it's only FEI passports and uh, polo ponies registered through the HPA are the two that are actually currently registered um, with the EU. Um, I'm sorry, recognised by the EU. Is that correct? That is correct, uh, Tara. Um, but uh, we have put in an application for uh, the other uh, stud books to be listed by the EU, and we are hopeful that that listing will be uh, delivered before the end of this month. And therefore, um, the vast majority of those, uh, well, all of those horses that want to move that are registered will be deemed so by the EU as well as by the UK. Approval of our stud books was obtained on the 10th of December. And then on the residency point, it sounds very official, but basically in summary, if a horse has been kept at a, um, at a livery yard or at a training yard or at your own yard for um, 40 days and you, you practice um, your own care there and the vet is happy with it, that, that's basically the definition of residency. Am I correct there? That's correct. So uh, the, the, the simple answer is there isn't a definitive definition of what residency means, but what it's trying to do is ensure that when the official vet comes to sign off the certificate, they can be confident or as confident as they can be that the animal has not been subject to either other equines that may possess a disease risk or has been under veterinary supervision to the extent that they can be confident that the animal isn't carrying a disease, which is really what the EU are worried about. 
I mean, thank you for clarifying that. Right, moving on. The next question we had was that if I want to take my horses to jump in Portugal, driving through France and Spain to get there, what additional requirements are there compared to just traveling to France? Okay, so the documentary physical and ID checks that will be carried out at the border control post on arrival in France um, will be sufficient. You won't be subject to further border control post checks en route. However, uh, it is just possible that the competent authorities, in this case in Portugal, may decide to do checks on the animals at the point of final destination. Um, otherwise, I think probably all I'd say is, so if they are unregistered or considered unregistered by the EU, in other words, if the stud book listing hasn't been granted, you'll need a journey log covering the full extent of your travel within the EU, and indeed a separate one for your travel within Great Britain, assuming it's over eight hours. Um, and obviously that will need to include all of the details of um, what you plan to do through France, through Spain and into Portugal, and of course, uh, what your pl plans are for any contingency um, for layerage for the animals and feeding and watering them. And of course, you'll have to meet general animal welfare requirements throughout the journey, whether they're registered or unregistered. And then the only other thing I think is probably worth pointing out, um, export health certificates are normally only valid for 10 days. So, you'll need to complete your outward journey within this time, or you'll require a new certificate for the remainder, remainder of your onward journey. So that's not the time it takes to return, that's simply the outward section. So it, it's advisable to complete that within 10 days in order to avoid any additional bureaucracy. Thank you. Right, moving on. Um, what will have to be done to bring horses from the EU to the UK, such as buying a sport horse in the Republic of Ireland? Okay, so this is the uh, regime over which we as the GB have now control. So all movements from the EU to GB will require an export health certificate and equine ID, so an equine passport. Um, and then we are differentiating between unregistered and registered horses. So we're not going to distinguish between whether the move is temporary or permanent, as they do within the EU. We're going to make it much simpler. So unregistered horses will need to meet the same or very similar pre-export blood testing, residency and isolation requirements before they travel. However, because the disease risk associated with registered horses, those uh, on, a, on a stud book uh, from the EU will not need to meet these requirements. Uh, because of the phased approach being applied to EU imports, horses will not need to enter GB through a border control post between January and July 2021. And that's whether they're registered or unregistered. Documentary checks will be carried out remotely and physical and identity checks purely on a risk basis at the final destination. And then from July next year, the physical and identity checks, again on a risk basis, so not all animals will be checked, will be carried out at a border control post. And details of those available to handle equines will be provided on gov.uk in due course. Okay, thank you very much. And how about traveling between Northern Ireland and Great Britain? Okay, um, the position is different depending in which direction you're moving. So under the Northern Ireland protocol, um, again, given that this is a, a G, uh, at, at GB behest, movement of horses between Northern Ireland and GB will be allowed to continue as currently. So they'll only require an export an equine passport and no health certification. Just to be clear though, uh, the Northern Ireland authorities will though provide at the departure point a travel note, let's call it that, recording the date on which the animals left Northern Ireland. And there's a reason for that, and that is 
to enable them to return to Northern Ireland with th within 30 days without the need for any blood testing, residency or isolation, providing they've only moved for racing or other sporting competition. So in order to ensure that, that the vet, when it confirms their ability to return from GB to Northern Ireland, knows how long they've been in GB and it's within 30 days, that note will tell him or her at what point they left Northern Ireland. And then on the reverse journey, so GB to Northern Ireland, um, effectively that will mean uh, that that will be uh, horses having to adhere to precisely the same rules as they will for movements from GB to the rest of the EU. That's really, really helpful. Thank you. Um, a similar question. Um, we do have a, a few followers in, in both parts of, of Ireland, so it's a similar question. Um, so what are the rules for travelling horses between Northern Ireland and, and south of the border, the Republic of Ireland? OK, that's much more straightforward because although, um, well, the EU conti will continue to treat Northern Ireland as the, F the equivalent of a member state and therefore movements between Northern Ireland and the Republic in either direction will be subject to precisely the same controls as they are now. And as you probably know, that's literally just needing to have a passport to accompany the animal in opposite directions. So all of that will stay the same. I would though mention there is a particular complication with the way that the animal is moved. If it's actually moved by a, a, a commercial transporter, then there are issues with the approval process for the documentation those transporters need. But I won't try and explain the subtleties of that on this call. Suffice it to say the detail will be on gov.uk. So the, basically the veterinary regime won't change. That will be as it currently is, but there are some uh, difficulty or the sorry, there are some differences in the way the transporter regime will apply. Um, but that only applies effectively where you're mo moving them commercially. Right. Understood. Thank you very much. Um, we've got lots of Irish questions. I think this is the last one of them. What will be needed for Irish horses traveling via the UK to compete in France? OK, so um, th th these are what we refer to as, as transit movements. Uh, so between January and July next year, uh, we, that's GB, don't propose to require Irish or other EU horses transiting GB to enter or leave via GB border control post. We will require some form of pre-notification along with an appropriate health certificate to accompany the animal. However, any documentary checks will be done remotely and there will be no, underline no, physical or ID checks on entry or exit from GB. But we will expect uh, the EU member state that the animal is going to end up in to notify us that the animal has left the GB territory so that we can um, ensure that our audit processes is, is confirmed. Thank you. Right, let's, let's move on from there. Um, very, very topical question. Uh, what difference would a trade agreement with the EU make? OK, so um, you and I were talking about this slightly earlier. Um, the processes themselves involved are likely to remain mostly the same. Um, what is likely to change is both the scale of the checks undertaken, so not what the checks are, but effectively the number of, in our case, horses that are going to be checked is likely to be reduced. And of course, um, tariffs that would otherwise apply to permanent moves will also no longer apply because it will be on the basis of a free trade agreement. Super, thank you. Not wanting to, well, we are trying to put you on the spot a little bit here, but of what is still, un, what is still unknown about how the new process will work? Um, I, I know, for example, talking to people that, we weren't yet sure if the UK has been awarded third country listing yet. 
and also um, the sanitary categorization that's been allocated to the UK, which might, or impl might have implications on the checks at the border control posts. Third country listing. Required to allow equine movements from GB to the EU from the 1st of January 2021. Each third country is allocated to one of seven EU equine health categories, A to G. GB has been placed in category A, requiring a maximum of two blood tests for equine infectious anemia, all equines, and equine viral arteritis, certain stallions only. I know you've alluded to them in answering several of these questions, but if you wouldn't mind summarising it here, what extra costs will there be for taking a horse um, into Europe for competition purposes? Okay, well, so the, the major change we anticipate is the veterinary charges associated with the generation of the appropriate certificates and the taking of blood tests and the like. Um, that obviously is a matter for the vets themselves, but given they will be fulfilling more of a role um, going forward than they have done previously, we would expect that to result in an increase in charges. But the certificates and documents that I've referred to will be generated by a colleagues in APHA free of charge. And the blood testing itself, so not the taking of the samples, which the vet will presumably charge for, but the testing of those samples to prove that they don't have the diseases that the uh, EU is worried about, will also be undertaken free of charge by our colleagues in the APHA laboratory in Weybridge. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. And how much extra time should be factored in um, to clear customs when traveling um, abroad? You, you've talked about um, the, the route planning, for example, going down to Portugal, but it, it, we do have stops on the way after every certain number of hours for the horses. So approximately how much extra time needs to be factored in going through these border control posts? Okay, so uh, I, qu quite a difficult question. I guess um, a typical civil service answer is it depends, um, but it depends on the level of controls that are actually applied and in, in particular, whether in the case of the, the border control post of, of, of arrival, whether the, obviously the animal is going to be checked or not, because some of them will just be um, subject to um, more limited controls and checks than others. But it, I think given the uncertainty, probably what I would recommend is that if you were planning to move, that you speak to the border control post that you're likely to enter through and, and they will give you an idea of, of the timings involved. Of course, it's a bit tricky to judge at this point because um, these are border control posts that won't have had previously to deal with potentially the increased scale of movements that we're talking about from Great Britain. But they're, they're the ones who are dealing with these movements on a day-to-day -day basis, so are probably best placed to comment. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, we, we've mentioned the def definition of unregistered horses being the ones where the, um, the bloodstock group might not be um, recognised by the EU. And in the small print, it says that they have to have their EHC certificate um, certified by the vet on the day of travel. But an awful lot of people leave early in the morning, literally three o'clock in the morning, to, to catch early ferries. It's a good time to travel the horses. Um, is this set in stone? Um, has anybody else raised this as an issue? Um, how might this be dealt with? So um, it, it, is the, it is an EU rule, uh, put simply. Um, it, it is, though, an issue that several uh, people have raised with us. I think without betraying too many confidences, the safest bet is for you just to discuss the arrangements with your vets. Um, the vets themselves know what the rules are. And in theory, in, in, in signing up to be approved, they recognize the timeframes and constraints under which they would have to operate. That doesn't make it any easier, um, but at least they should be planning for cover for that. But as I say, it what particular veterinary practices will do will be largely up to them. So it's probably safest to not only to contact them, but contact them sufficiently early in the process in order that you can plan around it. 
Okay, thank you for that. But it's, it's good to know that other people have raised it, so maybe something that's looked at. Um, finally, I just wanted to touch on the, the routes that people might want to travel to get to either Ireland or um, the continent, France, Belgium, Holland, um, without going into literally a ferry port by ferry port. Could you give us an overview of where the border control posts are and more importantly, where people could go to online to find out for themselves when, when they're planning their routes? Thank you. Okay, happy to do that. So um, the definitive position is that when the EU approves or accepts the border control posts that a particular member state has developed, that they appear as uh, an appendix to a, a bit of relevant EU legislation. Um, that obviously is, is a quite slow and somewhat laborious process. So um, the EU website more generally should give you an idea of those that are new to the list of BCPs, because as you and I have discussed before, um, because of the need to try and keep as many of the existing routes between GB and the EU open for equines as possible, a number of new border control posts are in preparation or will be available for the 1st of January. Not, not all, um, I hasten to add, but, but certainly some. And it's probably also worth saying that because of the particular interest in equines, um, a lot of the places that I'm going to mention now will be approved for equines, but not for other live animals or livestock. So um, one of the areas, uh, so certainly uh, Calais, the seaport of Calais, and Coquel, the uh, French end of the Euro Tunnel, we expect both of those to be available for equines. Uh, we also expect Dieppe, uh, Caen, Cherbourg, Saint-Malo, uh, and we discussed, unfortunately, the, the, the gap in things are with the Netherlands, where at the moment at least we're only expecting Amsterdam Airport to remain uh, appropriate for equines, but nowhere else. Um, and then for, your, for those with an Irish interest, um, we're expecting both Dublin Airport and Dublin Seaport mm -hmm. to be available, uh, and also Ross Lair. That's helpful, great. And um, I will get from you, Simon, where we can send our, our followers to go look on the EU website as, to, as this list develops, because I know particularly our dressage riders will be interested in when Holland opens up, because that will be a, a popular destination, particularly Rotterdam. Indeed. So, uh, so I, it's just to be clear, I'm, I'm not anticipating that there will be any significant move from, from the Netherlands, but one, one can't be sure. But sorry, I didn't answer the, all of your first question. So we will also on our gov.uk pages have an embedded link through to the BCP list with the EU. But, but given that um, this will be quite a, a fast moving area, one suspects. Lots may become clear within the coming days. I'm, I'm happy to provide a, a more direct link to you so that you can make sure that you and your uh, members and colleagues are fully aware with the very of the very latest position. Simon, that's been extremely helpful and enlightening. Thanks, thank you again for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you and um, I'm sure we will have a catch up in the new year as well to see how it's all going. Thank you very much and all the very best and, and hope all goes well with your and your colleagues' arrangements. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Time is running out. Act now at gov.uk forward slash transport dash equines. Check, change, go.